The next thing I would like to bring to your attention is um, you want to do the uh, items of interest. Oh, Eric, do you want to do the? So we're at that the time in the agenda where it's basically council initiated discussion. So there's sort of two forms of this. Um, one, is there anything you want to talk about having sort of been here for about eight plus hours um, that hasn't come up or that you want to revisit? That's one. And then the second thing, and it can be interrelated, are there things uh, that you'd like to hear about in sort of looking towards May council um, or even September council? Are there things that issues that came up and you say, wow, we'd really like to hear from such and such. And that has frequently been the case where you uh, raise issues or raise people you'd like to hear from that we try to get invited um, to come present at council. So those are two, sort of two bins, but sometimes they interrelate. What's on your mind? Other than the finish line. Anybody you want to hear from? You won't be here, but go ahead. That was okay, put, put on your mic. I won't be here. However, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, we haven't heard about the intramural program. Ah, well, oh, you are brilliant. Since no, yeah. you actually, you, I think, gave us the last. No, no, we've had we had Dan Kastner come in, oh, really? okay. but we're actually overdue on that. And it's so God, it's so freaky that you say that you said this because I actually emailed Rudy this weekend. I said, you know what? In thinking about May, um, we probably will. If he's available, we'll have Dan Kastner come and give an update because we try to get those updates in about every year and a half. It's probably been two years. But yes, we will have an update on the interior program schedule permitting. We'll do that in May. You can watch it by videocast. Any other suggestions? Val. We've talked about this before, but having the Smithsonian Institute uh, secretary come. You, you, can you invite him since you guys are buddies and he, that would be great? I can do that, David Scorton. So that would be really, that would be quite interesting. And maybe you, yeah. maybe Val, you could work with me. We could try to twist his arm to get him out here. That'd be great. Okay. For those who don't realize what we just talked about, the Smithsonian, the, the secretary of the Smithsonian is a physician. First time there's ever been a physician um, and a, a former colleague of Val's. Uh, when they were both at Iowa, well, when, when Scorton was at Iowa before going to Cornell and then going to the Smithsonian. So we have a good connection that Val's helped me with before. So, yeah, David Scorton. We've worked a lot with Smithsonian, and we would love to broaden our involvement. And there are ongoing discussions about possibilities, but that would be a, another good thing to invite him to. He's exquisitely busy. Uh, the Smithsonian Secretary does get pulled in a million different directions. Other suggestions? Um, now that the strategic planning has started, is there? Now we're five hours in. Can yeah, you we're feel five the difference? hours in. So I, I was, since I wasn't on council or involved the last time you went through all yeah. of this, so is this like now will be a portion of each open session or? Um, I'm not, I, uh, I would say not necessarily, okay. um, but as needed. You know, I would I would fully suspect that um, um, when appropriate, we'll do stuff, um, you know, in open session. Uh, but but certainly I could imagine that we'll I mean, I am serious when I say I doubt we'll have any major event without making sure at least a council member or two get invited. And so we'll probably also want to have check ins. Some of that could be in the open session. Some of it could be in the closed session. But, yeah, I think we'll be frequently. Um, uh, checking in, but maybe there'll probably be some formal check-ins as well, but uh, on an ongoing basis. And any any sort of serious forming of the strategic plan, we would certainly more formally present to council. I'm sorry, Carol. Yeah, yeah Carol. So, so Eric, so I know that for the 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 data sustainability council or whatever that group is yeah. is called now, that 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 report is due in May. Some time is that right? This so, so the, let, me, let me clarify. Um, the thing that's due in May, and is, a, and I could preface this by saying there's a good likelihood I will have again schedule permitting. Um, it might be really good timing to have uh, John Lorch come yeah. to the May Council meeting. Yeah. Um, and I was already thinking about that um, uh, to talk about a strategic plan that is due to Congress on data science. It's not about sustainability. Sustainability okay. is one part of it. 
Congress has requested a strategic plan from NIH around data science, broadly defined. Um, that is being generated by something called the Scientific Data Council that John Lorch and Steve Katz co-chair that I'm an active member of. Right. Um, and in fact, I can tell you that um, an early draft of that strategic plan um, has been presented at at least two council meetings, including NIGMS. John presented it to his own council, I think, like a week or two ago. And my right. understanding, that's on video cast yes, available. It is. So, yeah. so good. People may be interested in seeing that. Um, and I also was heading toward, heading, going to be also be presented at the NIAMS council. Um, and, and then it's going to get uh, refined a little based on that feedback. And then it's going to go out to, for request, there's going to be a request for information about it. So there'll be a public comment period. And then it's supposed to be due in May, maybe about the time of our council. So it may be a really opportune time. I was already yeah. thinking to have John. It might be that he comes and presents it as opposed to present it and ask for feedback because it'll already be submitted. Right. But it'd still be good to get your feedback about it. There are many elements within it. Um, included in that is this effort to try to better define the sustainability options for data resources across the NIH, something that we've talked about at this council as it yeah. pertains to NHGRI resources that we support. Yeah. So I, I, I think yeah. we should have a yeah. presentation. Glad you raised it. I was already thinking it, and now this will solidify it. Okay, uh, Val. So we had someone come from the FDA once, mm -hmm. and they talked mostly about testing, I believe. Uh, is there any chance we could, I think there's a new director. Oh, all the way to the top. So, or the, somebody of the FDA, yeah. lower down to talk about. So I don't about. know if anybody in the back room wants to approach a microphone, but what I would say is we would love to have that. There's a lot of vacancies in the office, uh, leadership vacancies in the offices that we were dealing with. So timing might, as far as I know, though, that's still vacant. Yeah, so I mean, the main office that we were dealing with, I think two or three of the main people, two, two of the main people have departed. And I don't think those positions have been filled with, with by Gottlieb, the new director. Um, so maybe we should put it on the shelf for now. I, I mean, because we've, we've sort of lost a lot of our regular interactions that a fair assessment. I mean, not, we still interact with the staff, but it's, I mean, people that I was interacting with have transitioned and the replacements have not been, not, not, not in place yet. So I think we want, I think the timing needs to be right. And I think it's probably a little premature until those positions get filled. Okay. People agree in the back, but, but. Well, well, we'll I'm more it. interested yeah. in uh, issues related to uh, treatments. So genomic-based uh, treatments and how they're looking at those. So, do we have any familiarity or expertise in genomic-based treatments, which is probably a little bit out of our scope? But I mean, getting a drug approved after it's been tested in a dozen patients. No, for example, uh, if you have a vector for a treatment that's been approved and just switching it in a different gene, why does it cost so much to, uh, to do this? I mean, these are big issues. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah, get real close to it. OK. Better. Was it, I think we still have some of the same staff level issues. There are some more senior folks that we might want to talk to about the broader issues that you're talking about, where maybe we can get a bigger picture idea. So we'll, we'll talk to our contacts and, and see what we can find out in terms of who might be able to come and actually be responsive to the kinds of questions that we have um, and see whether or not it, we stick with the, the plan to wait, or can we have somebody come sooner and expand the things that we've talked to them about, because I do think that would be helpful, and it might be a way to jumpstart some of the dialogue that we have. So. I hesitate to ask, but um, yeah, no, uh, you, you, uh, and, and and if this is boneheaded, just say so. When the uh, the large sequencing projects came up. The last time there was a lot of angst around this table about sort of where they were going and is this really sort of an investment that NHGRI needs to make at this point? I, and I I hesitate to ask because I, I don't want to put us in the position of asking for sort of 
mid-course reports from every single large project because that can come back and bite one. <laughs> but that's such a large project as we go into a strategic planning effort. I'm sure there'll be a lot of thinking about this, but but there was a lot of thought when those projects were 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 funded that that we were in a sort of different place and and what would happen at the next cycle. And it would be interesting to hear where they are and what they've done. And uh, they have 51,000 whole genomes and 23,000 exomes. And, and there was a, a, a really interesting data analysis workshop at our place you know, 10 days ago. Um, so lots of interesting things that, that, that are going on. Uh, I don't want to put them in a position of sort of defending themselves, but just a progress report. So, so let, let me, I think Adam's optimally um, situated to answer it. Let me just start by pointing out we recognize our genome sequencing program. You know, it's a huge deal for us. I mean, it's huge both intellectually, scientifically, programmatically, monetarily, all of it. And our strategic planning process is huge. And they share a lot of hugeness, right? Because a lot of it is vision and priorities and, and making, you know, what should we be doing? What's our identity and all that? So it has not escaped our attention that these two things are really, uh, are not in isolation. Um, we have, and, and, and we somehow need to synergize um, um, our vision and decisions about the sequencing program with our strategic plan. And, and we've got to make those things align better. So we, we are deep in thought about that, probably not quite ready to talk about it because we haven't made final decisions. But trust me, Dan, we are deeply thinking about the very issue you raise. And maybe Adam could put a little more texture on that. Yeah, uh, not, well, I was, right. All I would, will say is we were already talking about giving an update in May. Yeah, so. Well, could you repeat that? I, I, Sorry, I couldn't hear you. We are already talking about giving an update for May Council. So at May Council, and that's another way of saying we were already deep in thinking about this. And, and we, are, we are, probably by May Council, we'll have more to sort of say how we're going to align all these, all these, um, uh, you know, the, the new strategic planning process with a, a clear assessment of the sequencing program and how those things might dovetail and, and so forth. It's I mean, I do remember your first slide at the, at the, at the retreat where we started talking about this, with, which was the flagship slide. Right. So. Right. You know, it's very important. And, and there's a, there are a lot of moving parts here. So. What Adam basically said is by May, we're going to try to bring some ideas of where we're at, what our thinking is to May Council. Okay, so I would just like to uh, call your attention to the fact that we have received updates from our liaisons from the professional societies. So we have an update from the American Society for Human Genetics and the uh, National Society of Genetic Counselors. And we have an annual report from the International Society of Nurses in Genetics. Those are also in the ECB. Uh, so the next is uh, the conflict of interest statement, which tells you that we are nearing the end, but not quite. Uh, that will be in your green folder. So I will just read to you uh, what this is all about. The conflict of interest statement refers to the applications that will be reviewed in the closed session of the council meeting. You must leave the meeting room when applications submitted by your own organization are being individually discussed. In the case of state higher education's or other systems with multiple campuses geographically separated, own organization is intended to mean the entire system, except when a determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for the purpose of conflict of interest. You should avoid situations that could give rise to the charges of conflict of interest, whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in the deliberations and actions on any application from or involving your spouse or child, a recent student, recent teacher, a professional collaborator with whom you have worked closely, a close personal friend, or a scientist with whom you have had long-standing scientific or personal differences. The NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on recency frequency and strength of such associations or interest, either positive or negative, and will instruct you accordingly. 
and council actions in which, in which you vote on a block of applications without discussing each individual one, which we call the on-block action, your vote will not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria noted above. So with this, I would like to ask you to sign that statement and just leave it in your folder and we will collect it at the end of the meeting. Now, the last thing that we will do uh, this afternoon is uh, sort of not say farewell, but thank you to the council members who will be leaving. So we have two council members who are rotating off, uh, uh, Shanita Hughes and Eric Borwinkle. So Rudy has been kind enough to prepare these statements that I will read. All right. Here, I'll take her. I'll do that. You read. Okay. You read. All right. So, Shanita, thank you for your sage advice on all things related to the ELSA research program and for your service on the Genomics and Society Working Group of the Council. Your research efforts to increase access to genetic and genomic services to underserved populations has helped to prompt NHGRI to be much more inclusive in how we design our large population-based research projects. Your calm and polite demeanor make you a pleasure to work with, particularly when difficult decisions come before the council for consideration. You have consistently offered sound advice to NHGRI covering many areas of genomics beyond your own research interest, including training, how to implement, gen implement genomic technologies into clinical care, and the ever-increasing challenges associated with data science. Your willingness to draw attention to problems that are looming on the horizon may not be much fun in the short term, but it's a great service to NHGRI and a major responsibility of the council. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and the energy you have brought to the council meetings these past four plus years. <laughs> Service on the council brings a measure of prestige to all of you, but it carries a great deal of responsibility as well, particularly in the current environment of budget uncertainty and ultra-competitive pursuit of grant support. We recognize that we ask a lot of you, and we are grateful to all of you for your service. I echo Rudy's comments, and I would also like to say that I hope this is not a goodbye, because most people who are associated with us do circle back in some capacity or another. And again, thank you so much for your service and input. That's it. And with that, that's the end of the open session. So I will gavel us to a close. Looking at the clock, we will take a 15-minute break because we got to clear some of the stuff. And we will go into closed session briefly um, starting at 5 o'clock. Thank you all for a wonderful day. <laughs>